The main pieces that you look at when you're looking at classical education here at Eastbrook Academy, uh, starting off with the grammar stage, you'll hear these stages, grammar, um, then the logic, then the rhetoric stage. In that grammar stage, that's when kids are at their, their peak of wanting to know more stuff. They're exploring everything, whether it's different uh, as K-4, uh, different sounds, different smells, different sights, different ways to, to write, different things to look at. Grammar is, is that sponge-like time where our, our young students are, uh, you know, they, they're wanting to know about everything. They're curious. And so we want to fill that curious time with as much uh, groundwork as we can, as much uh, influential information at the lower level that they can get into uh, while they're able to just absorb it. They're absorbing that, that information like a sponge. And then it prepares them for the logic stage. So now they're taking that information that they've uh, been getting fe uh, fed into them and they're able to then process it and think through and ask really good questions and try to figure out what it is that they understand and why they understand it the way they understand it. And when they get to then uh, the rhetoric stage uh, in high school, now that's where they're starting to express it. That's where our, our students and, and one of the culminating pieces of our education here is our senior thesis and where they're able to look at what they've learned and who they are in God. And then uh, pivotal issues that, that they have on their heart that they've learned about even within the community or in the school. And they're able to expound on that based on their experience, based on the education that they've had over their years. And it's a great culminating uh, experience, not just academically, because yes, it is a, a long paper that prepares them for the writing and the different things in college, but more than anything, it helps to shape them of, of how they view society, um, how they would tackle and express themselves in difficult situations that we may see in our everyday life. It feeds them perfectly to get the knowledge that they need when they're ready to grab it, that then they're able to ponder on it and think about it and, and learn how to critically think about information. And then now they're at the stage when they're leaving here that they can express how they feel and what they know and how they, what they've learned. On the board, she would put um, medieval pictures and stuff. After we presented our medieval projects to the parents and guests, um, we did this parade around the whole school. I didn't think, like when we first started reading it because she said that we were going to do a medieval unit, I was like, um, okay. And then, like, as it started, as you started to get more deeper in the book, I started to get more interesting, and it started to make me want to read it a lot, so, because I like history. I like to learn about my past. You're going to learn a lot of interesting things, and you might end up like me, who I don't think it's interesting, but then it ends up getting interesting, ends up getting fun. We start music in K-4, and we have general music from K-4 through fourth grade. And, um, and that's, we, we teach it like it's a language. We teach them the sounds, then they give, we give them definitions and names for those sounds, like do, re, mi, for instance. And then we teach them how to read those things, and then we teach them how to write them, just like you would learn a language. And then we add to that, and we kind of spiral and keep adding, you know, building blocks to them learning uh, music like a language. Starting in third grade, then they, they split time with, with me, with general music and Mr. Carlton. In third grade, they do uh, pianos. So we have a keyboard lab up in the uh, orchestra room, and he works with them once a week for a half an hour to teach them some keyboarding skills. And that helps with their music reading. It helps with their, their listening, um, their ability to take stuff that's written down and, and turn it into music, you know, and not just dots on a page. And then in fourth grade, they do recorders and they do this really fun thing called recorder karate, where uh, they have a piece of music for the white belt and it's the easiest one. And once they've learned it and they've performed it, uh, then they earn a little piece of yarn, a white piece of yarn that they tie onto their recorder. And if they earn enough of those throughout the year, that basically is demonstrating, hey, I'm ready to learn an instrument starting in fifth grade. Then in fifth grade is when we kind of split from that general music and uh, and some some instrumental stuff into orchestra and choir. And kids make a choice in starting in fifth grade which one they really want to participate in. We have a Christmas program, uh, performance opportunities for even the younger kids, the lower school kids. Um, the K-4 and K-5 have about a 15-minute program that they perform each year. And then we have a first through fourth grade program after that that's usually around 45 minutes to an hour. Then we bring out the middle school and high school choirs and orchestras. And it's almost like three separate concerts all in one night. Uh, and then we have people rotating in, parents who get to see uh, the, the students perform. Some of them are here the whole night because they have kids who are younger and, you know, in the middle and then older as well. Uh, but yeah, that performing aspect of things and the skills that they learn is just important to us. So uh, we start even at those ages. Our whole goal is to expose kids to a variety of content area. 
So we have a drawing class, a painting class, a printmaking class. We even have a class that explores the traditional craft side of the art world. We dabble in graphic design a little bit. And um, we have a ceramics class for our seniors where we have a partnership with a ceramic studio across the street where she comes and or she lets us come and learn how to throw a pot on the wheel and use a big slab roller and things like that. So we have a wide variety and our whole goal for high school is to expose them to the multiple facets of different types of art, different content, different materials, as much as we possibly can. I've had several seniors actually graduate from Eastbrook Academy and go on to college to study art in many different categories. We have a graphic designer, I think that is just graduated from UW-Stout that is super, super amazing and Right out of, after his freshman year of college, he got this amazing internship with this with this uh, company in Madison, and that has really developed his career and been able to take him to take off into that. We have a student who is now a missionary overseas, and she's teaching art, but she actually graduated from here um, and produced a portfolio that awarded her a $40,000 a year scholarship to the University of Michigan. I've had students in the past who are definitely going to pursue college and pursue a field in um, art. And when they get to their junior, senior year, I try to tailor the art curriculum to fit their needs. So especially your senior year, we really work with those students to develop and prepare and plan for their like specific genre they're going for. Or if they're going to art school, making sure that their portfolio is complete, that they have something from everything that has really benefited our students in the past. I think we have a couple students right now that graduated last year that are pursuing art at college as well. And their portfolio really helped just kind of pave the way for them to get to that school. 